anecdote on the most interesting interaction you had with her? Most interesting interesting interaction I had with Maggie Gallagher. The mic. Oh, this mic. Oh, okay. Oh, so there are people asking questions. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. People say, like, how can you spend so much time uh, working with someone who's actively fighting against your right to merit? And my answer to that is always very simple. I do. Go to the magazine, by the way. Now, uh, actually, that's part of the answer, but the more important part of the answer is. Uh, <laughs> We, we actually, for whatever strange reason, click. And um, I think there's this one thing that LGBT people also understand that personal affection though it doesn't always align with this is a social expectation. And you sometimes you just click with people who don't buy and respect you, kind of like I click romantically with men, even though society doesn't respect you. Um, mm -hmm. So, probably the most interesting specific anecdote, and we talk about this in the book, is the first time we debated publicly, it was in Oregon, we both were changing planes in Salt Lake City and ended up on the same connecting flight. We didn't expect it. And so we ended up just sitting together. And at one point I pulled out my cell phone um, and showed her a picture of my partner, Mark. And she said to me, I can see why you called him home. And I, I, missed her. I thought I misheard her at this point. I thought, it's like, no, I just called home. I don't need to call home. I talked to him a few minutes ago. She's like, no, I can see why you call him home. He's home for you. And I like to really spit my drink across the room. I just, that's a great <laughs> How you get it, right? She, she like saw a picture of Mark and with a wonderful charming smile. She's like, I can see why you're home. You get that he's home for me, and yet you are actively fighting legally to make it so that he's not recognized by the state and by the government as home for me. What's up with that? Um, and I've had a lot of moments like that with Maggie, trying to navigate um, what seems to me a kind of disconnect the evidence before her eyes and some deep beliefs that she has about what marriage is. Any questions? Yes? Do you think, oh, wait, for someone who is. I'll, I'll repeat the question. So, okay. yes. um, do you think for someone who is convicted, such as someone like Maggie Gallagher, that it is possible to get through to them? I think, do I think it's possible to get through to people like Randy Gallagher? Yes. I mean, we've seen people change size on this issue. Uh, probably the most prominent recent example is David Blankenhorn. That picture I showed you of me and Maggie uh, was taken after we did an event at the Institute for American Values in New York City, which David Blankenhorn hosted. You can see the video uh, on YouTube. And David was a prominent opponent of same-sex marriage. He wrote a book called The Future of Marriage, which he argued against same-sex marriage. He testified in the California Prop 8 case uh, in favor of Prop 8, which took away our right to marry in California. And over the summer, he switched sides on the issue. Now, David and Maggie are very different people. David never um, believed, as Maggie does believe, that uh, same-sex relationships are morally wrong or condemned by the Bible. And Maggie uses that as part of the public argument, but she does believe that as a deep level. So they're, they're different people. But I've seen people change on this issue, including some people who have been prominent in the debate. And, you know, well, I think it would be a lot to expect that Maggie might come around on this issue. Uh, I never say that. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes, uh, I was wanting to ask uh, regarding uh, that distinction between immutable characteristics as a basis of, uh, of, of uh, civil rights um, and the, and, and uh, those things which are more implicated uh, over over time from say bir uh, from birth onward. Um, when it comes to that to, to, to that to, to that distinction, is there is there a um, a a plat not a plateau but a slope of uh, of, of things which are considered uh, not immutable but still more intrinsic to that uh, to, to that to that person's uh, civil rights? Uh, and going downward in terms of uh, how much they are held at that highly in, in society, or should be held uh, as an as an ethical basis for for those civil rights. It's an interesting question. So the question is, um, with respect to immutable characteristics, which the law sometimes uh, appeals to for, as foundational for rights, mm -hmm. um, versus other kinds of characteristics, which may not be quite immutable characteristics, but maybe 
deeper in some sense? Is, is there sort of a hierarchy or a way we can? Can I get any questions? I think I think so because uh, in our. Uh, uh, unlike, of course, immutable, immutable characteristics, uh, I would say I would say that the that uh, say in, uh, that your language, your spoken language, um, that's considered more of uh, not as much of an immutable characteristic. Yeah, but but it's still something that uh, not just that you that you would uh, hold that highly, but which you, allows you to function in a, in, a, in the society in which you, in, in which you live. So, right.
elderly couple are different from relationships between young and newlyweds. Relationships between you know, people who live together are different from relationships of commuter couples. I mean, relationships where people have lots of children are different from relationships with people who have no children. There are all kinds of relationships that we already include under the rubric marriage. And so then the question is, are same-sex relationships so radically different from different sex relationships that in law we need a special term for them? And I don't see why we do. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me that people are willing to make the commitment to having to hold a better for worse, richer for poorer, and difference in the health of the best they part. What they are committing to is what we call marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, and they should get the direct rights and responsibilities of that. Uh, one of the, I just did a series of nine short videos on YouTube, um, arguments in the marriage debate. And one of them I did was on the definition of marriage. People were saying, well, marriage by definition requires a man and a woman, and you, know, you can't use the same word for different things. But uh, the French use the same word, avocat, for both lawyers and avocados. Wow. Nobody tries to make guacamole out of lawyers. Right? You can, in fact, use the same word for very different things, uh, and society still somehow manages to work. So I often think that when people try to make this debate about a word, I mean, words are important, language is important, yes, but really there's something else deeper there. Um, often it has to do with wanting to signal that there is something different, and not just different, but deviant mm. about our relationships, and that's what worries me. Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for for being here and for your presentation. Um, and thank you for all you <laughs> But um, and, it, it, and what you're saying is really important in terms of creating that dialogue. I guess the challenge that I have is, um, you know, the approach that you're sort of taking is what Mel White talks about in terms of, um, you know, Mel White was the ghostwriter of Jerry Falwell, and, and and he really wanted to engage in dialogue with him, but. How do you, you know, by, by promoting this love, the person who hates you sort of concept, but how do you engage in conversation when her rhetoric, right, has led to real violence being committed against LGBT young people, LGBT youth, I mean, whether it be religious leaders or people like Matthew Gallagher, you know, I guess I, don't, I can't get past that part of it. Mm. Yes, okay. So a couple of things I want to say. One is, I don't want to put all of the people on the other side into one big boat, right? And just say they're all the same. So Maggie Gallagher is no different from Brian Fisher, is no different from Fred Phelps, right? 